Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing a most memorable Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona. The reference 116518 in yellow gold with blue dial on full strap. You can see and you can purchase this unconventional and unconventionally beautiful Rolex Daytona on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any point during this video to see our full sales listing for this yellow gold. Daytona with blue dial, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Rolex Cosmograph Daytona in yellow gold. Now the watch on my wrist represents one of my favorite colored gold references, regardless of era, regardless of brand. A combination of the visual punch and the heritage of the Daytona with an unconventional splash of color. This is a watch that makes the most of its 40 millimeters. It has an outsized wrist presence and an outsized personality. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it's an easy watch to wear. Now I haven't sized down the strap on the clasp to fit me specifically because we're going to do that for the final owner. But you'll note that the watch sits evenly on a smaller wrist. I would say you could wear this watch on the strap down to a wrist as small as 13 to 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. That's how well this watch wears on a smaller wrist. Now in terms of thickness, quite simply it isn't. 12.2 millimeters thick. It's even easier to fit underneath the cuff than the rotating bezel Rolex dive watches. 12.2 millimeters with a generously sloped rounded and conic profiled bezel with a matching domed style sapphire. Now from lug to lug, because it doesn't have solid end links of a bracelet, the watch is considerably tidier than its bracelet borne counterparts. It's a very manageable 47.6 millimeters across my wrist and should you wish to accessorize, and this is one of the few cases where it doesn't seem crazy to put a Rolex on a strap, the lug spacing is 20 millimeters. Now why do I say that? Many folks say if you buy a Rolex on a bracelet, you have to honor the designer's intent and wear it on the bracelet today with the bracelet bracelets being so solid, secure, and impressive. Now they are all of those things, but the look and the feel of a watch on a strap is something I wouldn't trade for any bracelet, regardless of integrity. When you buy this Rolex, it's almost mandatory that you accessorize with straps because you will truly be able to change the look and demeanor of the watch simply by swapping out a strap to a different color, a different stitch, a different material, or tailoring. In terms of the clasp itself, you can see it's the earlier six-digit Rolex. Daytona strap clasp. So if you were to get your Rolex Daytona on a strap back in the V series, so early 2009 based on the V series serial number of this watch, you would get the clasp that you see here with multiple adjustments made by sizing the spring bar. And as you can see, a combination of a contrast of polish and satin with a single fold and a clamshell closure featuring the Rolex 5-point coronet. So you have this earlier clasp design that gives the watch a little bit of a throwback feel for those of you who remember the heady days of the 2000s economic boom. I was working in mortgage-backed securities at the time, I remember, and I remember watches like this well. But not many that looked exactly like this because this dial and case combination, I, I want to say it has to be something exceptionally scarce because I've only encountered a few and that includes in online listings. First, the case itself. Beautifully intact, Rolex stamps its own cases and has a foundry to make its own gold and you can see the quality is evident. It's also not the Rolex super case. We can get a little closer since the watch is no longer on my wrist. It's not the Rolex super case because you don't have the sheer and artless case profile on the side or the overly squared off lug ends. It's almost like a larger date just and it has the fluid sensuous compound curves of that reference as well as the day date to recommend it. Though it is a sports watch through and through and you can see that in the form of the bezel. Now you always know that these watches have been minimally molested by refinishers when all of the original lacquer is still present in the calibrations and the numerals of these bezels. And you can see this one looks the same as it did the day it left Geneva. Beautifully defined, it frames a dial that is sensational. Red, white, and blue and gold for good measure. First, the simple presence of the fully luminescent Arabic numerals is unusual. That's not a common look for the Daytona, but it works. And it works because the contrast between the gold and the matte blue base is sensational. It is quite simply gorgeous. This is the perfect blue to counterbalance the punch of the yellow gold. It's almost like one moderates the visual impact of the other. Perfectly balanced seesaw style. And then we throw in the shocks of red. And you'll note the artistry with each of the sub-registers 
contained within a beautifully polished golden chapter ring framing a combination of white and red calibrations. This is a sensation on the wrist. Splashes of white in the print and the text, 12 o'clock for good measure. Screw down crowns as ever, imparting 100 meter water resistance. So the watch is a sports watch through and through and giving you one more reason to accessorize with separate straps. Throw this on a NATO or a rubber strap from the likes of Everest or Rubber B and this watch is water resistant and ready for the surf and the sands alike. Now the timepiece features Rolex's in-house caliber 4130. Let's give ourselves a bit more aperture here to brighten the picture. Caliber 4130 is an automatic winding three day power reserve, 44 joule hacking chronometer certified sports watch caliber. And I say it's a sports watch caliber because of a number of features that set it apart and make it tougher. First, a full balance bridge and a free sprung index. Both impart excellent shock resistance to a watch. An overcoil hairspring, which gives the watch the ability to resist the impact of gravity on its timing position in multiple positions. So it has that chronometer style Breguet overcoil hairspring for essentially resistance to positionally induced timing deviation. And finally, it has the Paracrom Blue Alloy. The Z series was the series in which these watches got the blue version of the Paracrom hairspring. And Z series was back in 2006, 2007. By the time V rolled along, roughly 2009, we were seeing the watches that you see here rolled out with Paracrom blue, and that was standard fitment by the time. Column wheel and vertical clutch caliber, meaning it has the crispness of the column wheel. You feel it, you hear it, you enjoy it every time. And it has the smoothness in start stop of the vertical clutch. For good measure, if you prefer to just have constant seconds running all the time at center rather than referencing a subdial, just leave your chronograph running with a vertical clutch. There's no additional wear or tear. It does not shorten the maintenance interval. And of course, Rolex building every part of this watch from the inside out. It is a true manufacturer product in every respect. You can see and you can purchase one of the most striking combinations of model, Rolex Daytona, color, gold and blue, and dial, full Arab that Rolex has ever offered. See it and make it yours on our website. Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona 116518 in yellow gold, fully luminescent, full Arabic dial. It's as distinctive in the dark as it is by day. See it in the full light on our website.